Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. Now, if I'm reading the signs correctly, if the tea leaves have fallen in the correct alignment, then it seems that you guys actually like the Planetary Annihilation early look. Now, the difference, of course, between WTF is and early looks is, quite frankly, WTF is all about critique and analysis of a product that is either close to being finished or is finished and released. Early looks, on the other hand, this is the kind of stuff that's in alpha, as in ropey as hell, nowhere near complete by any stretch of the imagination, but gives you a sneak peek of what you could potentially expect. So, please bear in mind, any of the videos that I do here, not necessarily representative of the final product. And also, I should probably think of a snappy name if we're gonna make this into an anything. So, War for the Overworld. This is a spiritual successor to Dungeon Keeper. It has the blessing of Peter Molyneux, although not the direct rights, which I believe still lie in the evil overlord's hands by the name of EA. As it stands, this is what's called the Bedrock Beta. It's part of the Steam Early Access program. It is extremely early. It is very much lacking in almost all features, but I will be able to show you some of the basics and give you an impression of the feel of the game. This is the kind of game that I'm going to be keeping an eye on. There's a reason for that. Back in the day, I say back in the day, it was probably like six months ago, maybe even less than that, I actually assisted in the kickstarting of this project, put out a video in support of it, checked out a very, very early development alpha, and it did meet its goal. It actually exceeded it quite significantly, and as a direct result, they were able to start development. Why did I back this? Well, I've got a little story for you. So, a little bit of story time. If you don't want to hear the story, you can skip forward a couple of minutes, and we'll have a look at the gameplay. I was 12 years old at the time, and it was my first trip outside of the UK. First time on a plane. Funnily enough, I feared planes less then than I do now. I absolutely despise the bloody things right now. I'm terrified of them. But back then, it was an interesting adventure. I was part of a group called the Durham County Wind Ensemble. And that was a military-style band with some of the best kind of youth musicians in the area. It was a fairly high-level band. And to be fair, I was pretty damn good at what I did. I was, I was actually the principal oboist there. I was extremely good at it. Sorry, it sounds like bragging, but I was damn good at it. And it's actually possibly my biggest regret in life was getting out of that and basically not practicing and man yeah that's making me depressed now anyway let's get past that so I go to Canada with them on tour yeah we go to play four or five different concerts in Toronto and on the one day that I got off we went to the mall and, you know malls for me were like wow really do you have these things went around the place found an EB games I think it was back then and bought myself a big box copy of Dungeon Keeper, the Canadian edition. Turns out the Canadian edition, way, way bloodier than the stuff that you could get in Europe, even in the US. It was a 17 plus rated game. I think I actually had someone buy it for me. And I remember taking it back to the hotel room, opening it up. It had a, a little Velcro fastening. You could actually open the box all the way up. And it had this nice embossed stuff. That was back in the day when, of course, everything was in a big box. Loads of cool details here and there. I thought, wow, this, this seems amazing. Took it home. Ended up with glandular fever, if you can believe that. Stayed off school for a couple of weeks and did nothing but play DK. Didn't even play on a PC. Actually played it on my Acorn Archimedes. Yes, you can start making the jokes right now. And used the PC emulation card that I had inside of the machine to play this. And it was and still remains, I think, one of my favorite games of all time. So that's why I backed War for the Overworld, because quite frankly... Massive nostalgia hit, and very much a situation of wanting a spiritual successor. So, let's look at it in its current state. So, it doesn't really have an options menu. This is, of course, done in the Unity engine, which means you've got that launcher, as you might expect. So, pretty standard there. Got a couple of maps in a sandbox available, and some limited features. But let's have a look at what the game currently is. Now, I'll be updating you once this game actually has those big major updates to justify it, but we're going to go into... This is a fairly small map here, fairly new update. Parmesan cheese. This should hopefully show you a little bit of combat, potentially. Now, this has got a very limited selection of creatures and rooms, and a very limited selection of spells, so just bear that in mind. Alpha, alpha, alpha. Okay, so, Parmesan cheese. Welcome, welcome. There's your dungeon heart. Probably remember that. The scrolling right now is pretty rough. I mean, it takes 
quite some time. You can even hear the spinning I'm hitting it so hard in order to actually get things working. What I do like is the, the fact that they've really done a number on the lighting effect, something that DK2 had quite a bit of, but in this case it's even better, like putting torches on the walls and actually adding to the overall ambient light level. Now, let's summon a few imps. There we go. Sweet. Yes, you can slap them. Slapping is now in the game. That was a feature that was just recently added. Always good for those of you that remember exactly how it used to work. Now, you'll notice this is all bedrock by the looks of it, so... Just want to drop the remaining imps that I managed to pick up. Oh, there's a portal, and let's just... I just need to mine out some of that and actually start getting some space. Now, there is supposedly another... Overlord on this map somewhere. Don't really know where yet. There we go. I believe he's called Steve, so said the patch notes. Alright, now let's start mining out some rooms. So we'll go for the, the kind of standard 5x5. Five five. Except I can't really see that far because it's too bloody dark. There we go. Ah! I hate it when they do that. Alright, we'll go 4x5 five then. I like my 5x5 five five rooms because it turns out we don't really have the space. Across the way, we can have ourselves a hatchery, or in this case, the slaughter pen, as it's called. It's one of those. Treasury we have around there. Gathering plenty of gold should be absolutely fine. I think we'll probably create a few more minions just to keep things up to speed if possible. There we go. There's one. Seems like there's a little bit of a hidden cool down there. There we go. Now you can grab them. Yeah, they need to kind of sort that out. Of course, you can pick your minions up like you used to be able to, and you can slap them around to make them work faster. Now, most of the sounds have been taken out of this beta right now because they're currently crashing the game, so the music is in, but the actual overall sounds for combat and just mining out those nice little satisfying cracks, the tumbling of rubble, that's not there anymore. Not, not right now, anyway. Hopefully that'll be in the game. These guys are just kind of sitting around doing nothing. Unfortunately, it is Dungeon Keeper, which means it's got the tile system. That means if you haven't claimed a tile, you won't be able to claim the tiles around it. So now that it has, it should be able to start claiming all of this and start fortifying the walls and so on and so forth. We do now have a connection to this portal. I should probably explain this for those of you who don't actually know what Dungeon Keeper was all about. I mean, it is possible. It's not exactly a lesser known game. It's a very famous game, but... The whole point of Dungeon Keeper is to destroy the other dungeon overlords, or alternatively, survive and take over the region against the forces of good, which will occasionally invade your dungeon. The dungeon heart must be defended at all costs. If that's destroyed, you lose the game. This is generally also where your treasure is kept, which can be very easily stolen. You'll also want to get a hold of these areas right here, which are portals which allow creatures to come into your world. Like this guy, for instance, who looks like a mixture of an orc and a strog. Now, we do definitely need somewhere for him to live, so kind of theme park-esque style. It's very much the Molyneux Bullfrog era, where everything was kind of built out in blueprints and tile-based stuff. We'll lay out a blueprint for one of those, and then we're going to lay out a blueprint for one of those. Not exactly the most secure area. You generally want those nice long corridors if you want a very, very secure region, because then you can lay traps and so on and so forth. Okay, so we've got a bit of space now. So we can build ourselves, say, a library, and we can look for a foundry as well. At the moment, these buildings don't appear to function. Obviously, because it's still the very... I mean, I, the thing about beta, I suppose, right now, is the idea that... It's a term that has a very specific meaning within development, but that meaning doesn't necessarily seem to apply to gaming because the term is used all over the place. Like, beta can just mean glorified demo, or it can mean the most basic of things. So, in this case, beta is definitely beta, without question. Let me grab that. There we go. Might want to actually size this up a little bit. I do hate asymmetry and uneven buildings, but in this case, it would be nice to get a little bit more space. Same for here. This can be bigger than it currently is, even though there's a lot of bedrock there kind of blocking it off. In fact, let's just mine out all of that as well. Let's just make it a little bit extra. Get another orc in there by the looks of it. Okay, dump down library. That should attract some warlocks, and then we can dump down a foundry, which will most likely attract trolls, assuming those are even in the game yet. What on earth is that? I actually have no idea. Let's zoom in and find out. And grab it. It uh, seems to be some kind of goblin archer, by the looks of it. So there you go. They're going to eat the little piggies. I can actually grab the piggy, which is always good. Can I feed the piggy to him? Guess not. Not yet, anyway. Used to be able to do that. A little bit of micro that you could do, but again, not in the game yet. 
I mean, the game so far definitely has the Dungeon Keeper feel. Laying out the tiles and the rooms is very streamlined, just like it was in Dungeon Keeper 2. You got the imps fortifying the walls like they used to. You got the nice creepy ambience. And of course, you will have the original voice actor from the Dungeon Master in Dungeon Keeper 1 and 2, which is always good. I'm going to add a few more squares to the room here. I'm hoping to run into the other Dungeon Master. Ah, it looks like he's over there. You can see him. You can absolutely see him. So if we keep mining in this direction, we will indeed find his dungeon. It's right there. So we might want to acquire a few more creatures before we get on the attack there. But it would be nice to see a little bit of combat. Now, I do actually have the possession spell. What's a very famous feature of Dungeon Keeper. The ability to possess a creature. Of course, this is by no means ready yet. As you can see, it's in a very, very ropey basic state, but it does allow you to explore your dungeon from a first-person perspective. The point of this, well, there's actually a lot of points of this, it allows you to explore areas underground that you don't have possessed. Alternatively, it also allows you to fight and use special abilities. You are a little bit more powerful when possessing, so it's always good to have. But that lets us look at some of the models. I mean, the model quality is pretty good. Animation quality obviously needs a lot of work very very ropey right now but the nice lighting effects and the creepy ambience and things like that are definitely in there let's just jump out of him now i want to keep pushing through here and once i've done that i should be able to run into steve i'm hoping to try and steal some of his land here i don't even know if i've got enough creatures out to do that maybe i should summon some more imps i don't know if he's even got any can i summon any more imps i th nah, i think i might be at my maximum Oh, no, never mind. There we go. Here you go. Have some more imps. Why not? We've got plenty of space to acquire more creatures here. Now, I don't know how complete the combat is, so I'm wanting to try and run into Steve to see whether or not there's any actual combat going on. Can't really go any further through there, although I could possess an imp, and that would allow me to wander around and try and explore his dungeon. Ooh, hello. What do we have here? It's a... I'm not sure what it is, but it died really, really fast, so it can't have been that good. Now, of course, in the original Dungeon Keeper, you were able to knock creatures unconscious and then put them in prison. You could then torture them. You could also starve them to death in prisons and turn them into skeletons and all sorts of different things like that. There were some fairly advanced little hoops you had to actually jump through in order to get the majority of the really powerful creatures, which was actually rather awesome. You could also train creatures up in an RPG style. They'd get different levels, different abilities. They'd be, even become a little bit larger. And it made you re really value your creatures as well. Obviously, so far, there's not a huge amount to it. But what I'm seeing so far, I like. It seems like they've managed to capture the feeling of Dungeon Keeper, and they're... I wouldn't say they're adding their own unique twist to it yet, because there, there aren't really all that many features in it that I recognize as being new, yeah? All of this stuff was in Dungeon Keeper 1 and 2, and that's fine, because DK 1 and 2 didn't have a huge number of serious mechanical flaws, yeah? They were very mechanically solid games. The problem is, of course, they never really got the chance to be developed any further, which sucks. It really, really does. Alright. I'm going to try and possess an imp if I can. There we go. Alright. Let's go and have a little bit of a wander. As you can see, he he has a few enemies. I don't think... Can I actually bypass him? Looks like I can. Alright. So we're going to have a, a little bit of a jog over to his portal and see what's up in his dungeon here. That's a, a gargoyle and now I'm horribly dead, but there you go. But I got to explore a little bit of his dungeon. Also gained control of another portal. At least I will in a second here. But it's looking alright. It's got... It seems like it's going in the right direction. It feels right. That's perhaps the most important thing at this stage. That they haven't completely screwed up the very basics. But I think there's going to be an awful lot more to see in the next few months as they continue to actually add features into it. I mean, the one other thing I would like to comment on is the actual early access program in the first place, and more to the point, the way Steam presented it. I don't think I have a problem with the early access program per se, eh? even though it's basically pre-ordering. Yeah? You're pre-ordering to get into a very, very, very basic version of the beta and to be involved in the development. I mean, there's a promise that you're involved in the development. What that actually means, well, that, that's a different matter entirely. 
you do get to provide feedback. It's very, very easy to do that. Uh, I've run out of mana, so I can't actually possess him. Uh, can I do it now? There we go. All right. I'm not sure how much attacking I can really do. Probably not too much. If any whatsoever, I'm clicking. It's not doing anything, so I guess that's fine. I think it was just the, the general way that it was actually promoted in the first place, saying, hey, it's now available, guys. Like, well, it's not. I mean, it's, it's paying $20 for access to a really early beta with barely any gameplay. I don't blame the developer for that. If Steam's going to allow that, and it's going to be properly disclaimed, and to be fair, there is a gigantic blue notice on the page that says, yep, this is nowhere near done. And that's fine, but... it. I don't think we should necessarily be advertising stuff as now available when it's really just a very early beta. It's just a minor gripe about something on the front page of Steam, but I think Steam could definitely do a better job of indicating in the new releases section what's early access, what isn't. You know, I personally would like, like say, a special border or color for early access games. Right now, there's just a tiny piece of text and considering they often throw those big banners up there saying, hey, it's now available. It is just a little bit misleading. Anyway, that's that's a minor point, and by the by, Wolf the Overworld is looking kind of sexy right now. I'm hoping to keep an eye on it over the next few months as development continues. There's a huge amount of potential here. My name has been Total Biscuit. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.